Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Kirk, and I just wanted to take some time um, to respond to a, an email I received from a student. Uh, a few students had asked about homework question number 39 on homework 13-1. So I want to give you a brief tutorial here on how I would approach this question. Um, Alright, so here I have on my paper the question that was asked, and the first part was to plot this point. So plotting these polar points can be very challenging, and I want to walk you through how to do this one more time. So on my paper, I'm just going to draw a set of axes, and again, a polar grid is typically those circle graphs, but I'm just going to do mine on a normal um axes, I guess, here. I mean, imagine that you've got the circles here, okay? I'm just drawing it on a normal axis. This is all you need to do at this point. So the first thing I need to do is when you plot a polar point, you start with plotting and drawing the ray first. So you want to draw the angle first. So it's unlike plotting a normal rectangular coordinate, a rectangular coordinate, you would say this would be x and y. This is a polar coordinate. This is my r and this is my theta. So you always draw your theta measure first. So if this were my axes, I want to know where the negative pi over 4 would be located. Well, a negative angle would go in the fourth quad or go in this direction. This is clockwise. So if it says negative pi over 4, I'm going clockwise pi over 4. So I'm going to start by just drawing an angle of negative pi over 4. And it doesn't have to be exactly where negative pi over 4 is, but um, this would represent an angle of negative pi over 4 radians. Now the next part says that the radius um, would be negative 3. Well, hypothetically, if this said r is equal to positive 3, I would be going one, two, three, and putting a dot. But because it does say negative, that's telling me to do, go on the ray in the opposite direction. So what does that mean? That means I'm going to use my straight edge and continue my angle in the opposite direction. So again, I knew it was going to be in the opposite direction because of this negative sign here. That's telling me to draw the ray in the opposite direction. So now I'm going to go three spaces, one, two, three. And that's how I would plot that polar coordinate. So that's the first part of this problem, is how to plot this polar coordinate. So I plotted it. So now the next part of this question, there were um, parts A, B, and C. They wanted me to find the other coordinates of theta. And they had all these restrictions. Part A... They want r to be greater than 0, and they want theta to be, to be between negative 2 pi and 0. So when I'm approaching this kind of question, this is what I'm going to think of. Uh, I'm just going to redraw this picture a little simplified for myself and just try to understand what's happening. So I'm only going to draw basically where this point is located. So if I were to draw this point, here's my ray, and I've got 1, 2, 3. That's essentially the point that I'm trying to um, relabel. So let's see, they want r to be greater than zero. They want r to be positive. So because they want r to be positive, I don't want to use the opposite ray. So that tells me, let's see, they also say they want negative two pi to zero. So because it's going from negative two pi to zero, that's telling me they want the angle to be negative. So they want the angle to be negative, but they want the r value to be positive. So for the angle to be negative, I'm going to have to go in this direction. And I'm going to stop right here on this ray. So I have to figure out how many radians this was. Well, if I go back up to this diagram up here, if you remember from geometry, this angle here that I'm going to color in and this angle here that I'm coloring in, those are called vertical angles. Vertical angles are congruent. So that means that this angle here is also pi over 4. Well, how does that help me? Well, in this section here, if this is pi over 4, I need the angle from the x-axis all the way here. So if you remember that, that's pi. 
So pi plus a pi over four. What's pi plus pi over four? Well, that's four pi over four plus pi over four to give me five pi over four. But again, I'm going clockwise. So because I'm going clockwise, that angle is negative. So I started with actually figuring out what the angle measure was going to be. And then if it's negative five pi over four, that's what this ray represents. It's going a radius of one, two, three. So this is the coordinate three comma negative five pi over four. That's part A. Now part B has another restriction. Hopefully that helped you with part A. I really hope it does. If it doesn't, please email me and let me know. Part B says R is less than zero, and theta this time is between zero and two pi. So again, I'm gonna start over here and look at this theta measure. If it's between zero and two pi, that's gonna tell me that the angle is going to be positive. And because R is less than zero, they want R to be negative. And if R is negative, that's my signal that I have to use the opposite ray. Okay, so this is going to be a challenge. So let's try this out. I'm going to draw my axes. Let's see here. So I need the angle, let's see, I need the opposite ray, but I need the angle to be a positive measure. So I'm thinking that for it to be an opposite ray and for R to be negative, I'm gonna to have to go back and say that it's gonna be more like this original picture here. Because I'm gonna to try to figure out, for a positive theta measure, I'm gonna figure out what the angle is going here all the way around this way. And if I could figure out that theta measure, that'll give me the angle measure in the positive direction, and then I could still use the opposite ray. So I'm gonna redraw that on question part B. Whoops, I just dropped my straight edge. All right, so I'm gonna redraw this. And because I need it to be the opposite ray, I'm just gonna use that in pencil here. And it needs to go in the positive direction. So my angle measure is going to travel this way. And I need to figure out how many radians that traveled. Well, from the original diagram, I know this is negative pi over four, or just you can think of it as pi over four in this section. So I'm trying to figure out this pink arc. How far did that go? Well, a full circle is two pi. So if I take two pi, take away pi over four, that would be eight pi over four, take away pi over four. So that's seven pi over four. So what did I just figure out? This entire pink arc is seven pi over four radians. And then because they want the opposite ray, I drew this penciled ray in here. We got one, two, three. So negative three would be my opposite ray. So negative three comma seven pi over four for that representation. So essentially this question, I'm just plotting the exact same point. If I look at all three of my diagrams so far, the point is in the exact same spot for all three problems. The point is up here in the second quadrant, the point is in the second quadrant, and the point is in the second quadrant. All I'm trying to do is figure out different ra um, radian measures to represent those angles or different R values to represent the ray that it's on. The last part to this question, part C, was telling me r is greater than zero and theta was between two pi and four pi. So I'm gonna look at this and say to myself, self, what does this really mean? Well, if theta is between two pi and four pi, that means it's more than one full circle. So again, this is telling me the angle is positive and it's gonna be more than one full rotation, because if you remember one full rotation, that's two pi. So we gotta keep on going till I don't know when, until it gets to four pi, somewhere between there. And r is greater than zero, so that's telling me r is gonna be positive, so I don't need to worry about the opposite ray. 
Okay, so again, I'm gonna start by drawing my picture and I don't want it to be on the opposite ray, I want it to be on the ray itself. So that means I'm gonna draw the ray itself here. One, two, three. And I need to go in a full rotation and then some more. So here's my full rotation and then some more. So I need to figure out how far that traveled. Well, let's see. I know because of the vertical angles, this is pi over four, this little piece here. I'll color that in, that's pi over four. So let's see, one full rotation would be two pi. And how much further did I go? This would be pi. Let's first figure out what's pi take away pi over four. So that's four pi over four, take away pi over four to give me three pi over four. So this was three pi over four, but I also wanna circle all the way around and add another two pi to that. So three pi over four plus a two pi uh, that's really 8 pi over 4. So 3 pi over 4 plus 8 pi over 4. So 3 fourths plus 8 fourths. 3 fourths plus 8 fourths. That's 11 pi over 4. So I figured out the entire rotation is 2 pi. And I added this 3 pi over 4 to give me 11 pi over 4. So that's what this pink spiral angle is. And at 11 pi over 4, I had a radius of three. So for this answer, it's positive three, and then 11 pi over four. If hypothetically you pick this to be a negative three here, what that would represent would be the opposite ray. So this angle, again, tells you how far to circle around and draw your ray. And this number here, if it's positive, that tells me to draw the point on that ray but if it's negative, you draw the point on the opposite ray. I hope that helped you out. Thank you for emailing me. Uh, I was trying to take my time on the tutorial here to really help you understand how to plot the points. It gets very challenging when you have all these negatives. Um, so thank you for hanging in there and keep the questions coming. Uh, if you're enjoying these tutorials, you know, like the video so I know that you're enjoying them and that they're helpful. And uh, until next time, this is Mrs. Kirk. Take care. Bye-bye.